At home, we're at the RTR. I'm going to shoot a video, uh, and I, this is the ultimate simple solar system. I, I, put, I haven't actually assembled it yet, but my goal was that you can entire in, uh, the, uh, assemble the entire system with a pair of pliers. This channel locks were the closest ones I could grab, but just a regular pair of pliers. If you don't have a pair of pliers, you can go to Ace and buy a cheap pair for two bucks. Uh, that's all the tools you're going to need. That was my goal anyway. I hope I've succeeded. We'll find out here in a minute. No skills, no talent. Uh, you're going to have to be able to lift a battery, and if you can't lift a battery, that's okay too. Uh, you, hopefully you can find a neighbor who can uh, help you lift your battery and get it in your van. And we're going to build an entire solar system for how much? $443.23. And uh, very, very precise work, uh, and that's a 120 watt solar panel uh, suitcase kit right here. That is a 100 amp hour AGM battery. It is a 500 watt inverter and the wire to connect it that you don't have to do a thing for. It is a voltmeter so that you always know what the voltage is in your battery. Uh, it is a USB cigarette lighter plug. These are the things you need to get the power out. And what does it have on it? It has those. It has the fuse. No, no wiring, no crimping, no nothing. You undo a nut on the battery, you put these on, red to red, pause, uh, black to black, positive to positive, negative to negative, and you're done. You've got, you've got uh, a US uh, cigarette lighter plug, um, and I'll show you how to put this on. It's, just, it's as equally as simple, it's just nuts. You're going to do this with, with, a, uh, with a pair of pliers. That was my goal when I assembled this system. $428, an entire 120 volt system beginning to end nothing but a pair of pliers. I wanted to make this as simple and as cheap as I possibly could. I think they're, I'm hoping that everyone here, other than handling this 65 pounds of the battery, can, can do this beginning to end and you'll have 120 watts and I think you can do it and handle it. And that was the, the so, sil, single sole goal of this exercise. And the, the motivation was that people ask me all the time about solar generators. And we, I've asked some people to bring some solar generators. And uh, this first one, now the, the main one you're going to think about is the, the uh, Goal Zero Yetis. Who, does anyone have a Goal Zero Yeti? Yes. How much, do you have the small one? Yeah, 400. And how much does it cost? It's about 500 bucks. It's about 500 bucks. And does it create any electricity? Does it create any? No, it doesn't create any electricity. It generates nothing. It generates nothing. Uh, it stores, it's got a battery, and it stores power. And you could put the power in it, and it will store it and let you take it out. But it generates nothing. I'm generating 120 watts of solar for you here. And how much was your Yeti? The say a little more. It costs more and you're not producing any power. You have to plug it into something to get any power to get some out. Well, hello, we live in vans. What are you going to plug it into? You can plug it into your cigarette lighter plug and that's what you do, ma'am. Oh, you have solar panels and you're using it as your battery. Well, this battery I paid $145 for. Uh, and I think it's a little, well, it's not as good. The one in the Gold Yeti is a lithium, and so it is better. It's a better battery. And Gold Zero makes high quality stuff, so I wouldn't even say it's a better battery, but it's $145 versus $450. And all the other things you're getting are the, are the uh, you're getting a built in inverter. Well, here's the inverter. It's, this inverter was $45. It's a 500 watt. Well, you say, well, I need a bigger one. Well, you just buy whatever size you need. You need a thousand watt inverter, you buy it. It'll be another twenty dollars, let's say. I don't know, I didn't price them. All of it's off Amazon, and when this video goes up, I will put the links in, but it's all off Amazon. And uh, this is a universal battery, which has a pretty good reputation. I will pull it out and show it to you. Now, it's normally $165,
And hold on just a second, you know, we do it together. <laughs> We're old men, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's a, it normally I think it's 165, and before Christmas they had it on for 145, and I said, man, I can't pass this up. It's a 100 amp hour AGM uh, universal battery, which is a pretty good battery. They're from China. Uh, but but they're pretty good batteries. I've heard pretty good things about them. I thought it was worth the risk, and I would recommend them. It calls itself a deep cycle. The truth is it's probably not truly a deep cycle. But for most of us, if you treat it right, you'll be satisfied. For the money, it's a screaming deal. Yeah, a lifeline at 300 is going to be a far infinitely better battery. It's $300. And if you wreck this battery, you're not going to be so sad as if you wreck your $300 lifeline. And... <laughs> you're probably going to wreck your first time out, you're probably going to wreck them. So here it is, I think it will say it's a UB1200 universal battery, uh, where does it say AGM? Somewhere, non-spillable uh, bat, uh, battery, I'm looking at it upside down. Somewhere here says it's AGM, it's an AGM battery, it's not gel. Oops. It's a glass mat battery. It's a glass mat, it's not gel, you don't really want gel, you want AGM. It's not lithium. Lithiums are better. No one's going to deny that, but they're so much more expensive, and I think this is going to serve you as, as someone who knows nothing about batteries. You're buying something because it's easy. It's not cheap. Your goal zero was not cheap, but it's easy, and you don't know much. This is as good a battery as a lithium because if you wreck it, you haven't lost much. So, and all we have to do to hook things up, because it's an AGM, there are no fumes. Okay, let's amend that before I get a lot of corrections. All batteries off-gas something. Essentially, an AGM is so little, we are safe to say it is fumeless. And that is the assumption. But technically, they off-gas something. Okay, and what we have for a solar panel, and I'm going to turn this over to Jim. I bought an Echo-worthy 120-watt suitcase. Uh, and it's two, and I paid 200 and I think I looked in the current price is still 200 but I'm not certain of that. Uh, and I bought it based on Jim's recommendation of Echo Worthy products. So I will, uh, you tell about your experience with Echo Worthy products. And I'll open this up. And show my, you. my main experience with uh, Echo Worthy is five years ago I, I bought panels and, and an MPPT controller was $300 to handle the panels. Uh, an Echo Worthy controller to handle a MPPT controller to handle one of the panels was a hundred dollars, which was unheard of at the time. Most of them that said MPPT and didn't cost a fortune were fakes. I, I used my original Echoworthy controller for five years and then gave it off to somebody else. There, it's built like a bullet. Uh, I, I feel Echoworthy, Renogy, Windy Nation, Solar Boulevard, they're they're all in the same ball ballpark. Um, <coughs> Find the one that has the product you need. Find the uh, uh, the best price on it and get it from them. Um, uh, Echo Worthy works really well. So this is the complete system. It has a controller, and if uh, it's blinking right now because it's got it's hit, so there's sun hitting it, not directly, but it's still hitting it. It's got the wiring, the controllers. It's absolutely completely ready to. Pro it's producing power. Some of the other portables don't come with all the wiring you need. So at any rate, now all we'd have to do is hook the clips up and we're producing power. That's the whole deal. Uh, at some point, if you wanted to, you could mount this on your roof. Uh, I've known people who did that. They just got a ladder rack and mounted it on their roof or whatever, however you want to mount it. You, you could rewire this so that the wires from the panel come to a controller in your vehicle near your battery, which is always best. The risk here is, you know, it, it rains, it gets wet, and, you know, that's, that's a lot of worry about these things. Uh, this thing's producing power. All we got to do is connect it, and you're producing power right now, and you're done. All done. But then you have to get power out of the battery. I mean, that's still not accomplished anything. And, again, um, so let's talk about this. This is, a, this is an, also a solar generator. Uh, did this come? I don't know where you went to. Does this come with a solar panel at all? So you bought a panel separately. Oh, that was a really good deal. That was a really, really good deal. Uh, so tell us about this uh, solar generator. Uh, How much is it? That's the downside, $1,400. So here's $1,400. And how big is the battery? It's uh, 84 amp hours. 84 amp hours. It's a smaller battery. It's a much better battery being lithium. And you would get as much usable power 
out of an 84 amp, uh, amp hour lithium than you will a 100 amp hour AGM because of the nature of lithium. So, oh, and we're going to call the batteries, we can equal call them equal, power. yes, in volume. However, lithium is better, I would say, if it's a good lithium battery, and who knows. For $1,400, I hope it's a good lithium battery. But you're not, you're not producing any power with this. No generating of power. So you go somewhere and plug this in. You've paid $1,400, and you're not creating an, an one watt of electricity. You go buy a solar panel, and now you're, this is a battery bank that is an, ex, and is an expensive and good inverter. Uh, so it's, a, it's the battery, it's one of these, all hooked up, and a inverter, except it's a thousand pure sign, and that is expensive. And it's one of these inside, and that's what you've bought. Xantrex makes a thousand watt pure sign, and I think they're about $200. It is plug and play. And this is not, you're going to have to do two nuts. <laughs> you're going to have to undo two nuts and, oh and put them back on. So this is not plug and play. But I, I am actually mocking this. I hope you guys are getting the whole idea of what we're doing here. It's convenient, it's all in one spot, and it's $1,400 versus $445 for as much power. And I'm creating solar panel power right now with the 120 watt solar panel. So uh, the whole point of this is to mock solar generators and tell you not to buy one. That's really all I'm trying to tell you because I get that question a lot and people tell me they paid $1,400 for a solar generator and I cringe because, man, you can buy a lot of solar and battery for $1,400. To, to give a comparison, you, you, most of you haven't seen my trailer and truck. I had my truck behind me. My trailer has almost 1,200 watts of solar. It's what I call a solar generator because, <laughs> yeah. because without using battery power, I run my air conditioner, I run my hot water heater, I run a two burner electric stove. The voltage on my battery never drops. My solar system provides all of the power I need straight up. My solar system, batteries, inverter, everything included was $3,500. So you, you get a couple of cute little units like that together and, and you've got more than enough power to run a house my way. So, for example, you just buy another one of these for two hundred dollars. So, uh, so we're at four twenty-five now. We'd be at six twenty-five. We'd have two hundred and forty watts, a hundred amp hour AGM, and, and an outstanding system. That is probably all nearly everyone here needs. If you're in a van, if you're an RV, you need more. RVs are they have a lot. Most people using RVs use a lot more. So, for six hundred and as opposed to sixteen hundred. And it is a plug and play. It's a big, heavy battery, and you're going to have to assemble a little bit. Uh, for 600 versus 1600, I, I am, I'm honestly, sincerely recommending this. What's to get two of those? Do I need two batteries? Two of these right here? Panels. No, no two panels. Well, you, you don't need two batteries with two panels. Um, and what happens is sometime during the day, this battery becomes charged and all of the power that comes out of the solar panel, you can just use. Uh, if, if you got two batteries, I, I would suggest getting two solar panels because you, you, you want to have a good ratio to keep this charged up. Otherwise, you'll damage it. You can do it either way. You could buy the two panels and, and go into one. So here's the thing about batteries that we most people fail to understand. You can take all the power out you want, but you've got to put it back in the next day. And the whole question isn't, how much power can I take out? It's how am I going to put it back in tomorrow? Because this battery, all batteries, except lithium, actually lithium, big advantage to lithium is it's kind of an exception. All, all lead acid based batteries, including AGM or gel, want to be full, 100% charged often. Right. Every, uh, as once often a week as even, possible. as off daily, and it'll last forever. That's why your battery lasts and your car lasts forever. It's full every day. But if you only fill this once a month, it's not going to last long at all. So the only question is, how often do you fill it? You, and you have to take all the power out. You've got to put it back in the next day. That's, and if you have two panels and one battery, you're very likely to bring it up to 100% the next day. If you have two panels and two batteries, you're much less likely to bring it up, those both batteries, up to 100% the next day. How long a battery lasts depends on how well you treat it and how deeply you discharge it. The, when you discharge a battery, a little bit of the lead 
comes off of the plate. When that lead runs out, or it builds up enough in the bottom to short out the cell, the battery's dead. Yes, sir. We'll, um, when your battery gets full, will that solar panel overcharge? No. No, that's the job of a solar controller or a charge controller, is to keep the, the, it from ever being overcharged. That's the number one job. If, it, unless it's broken, your battery will always be safe. Yes. I don't know anything, so this is probably a stupid question, but you showed coming off the battery is that uh, cigarette lighter thing. So does that mean you, you get you get one thing you can run? So if you're running lights and then you want to run a fan, you have to unplug the lights in order to run the fan? Well, you can buy a doubler that just plugs in and doubles it, or you can do what I did and buy two or three of these. Well, what the best those? thing to do is to learn how to, to uh, strip and crimp and just strip and crimp a, a fuse box in it. But that's more complicated. I'm not doing anything complicated here. A fuse box is the answer because it might have six or eight or ten fuses where they would all go into one thing. Is that the fuse that's box? The inverter. No, we're not doing a fuse this box. This is the inverter. That's the inverter. I'm going to put the, posit the red on the red. So it's a 500 watt. The black inverter. on the black. Yes. What brand is it? It's Energizer, and I've had really good luck with Energizer products. So I, I, I haven't run this. Oh, did you see? No. Go ahead, yes, go ahead and do that, I'm sorry. I'm yes, no, no, me. There's a cigarette lighter plug for it, too. Well, it comes with one. Yeah, I, I, oh. I don't like cigarette lighter plugs. No, no, but super simple, super easy, fat and cheap. Uh, cigarette lighter plugs really are not a very robust system, but they're fine to work with for now, and in the future you could maybe upgrade to something else, but uh, they're fine for now. You, there's a dozens of cigarette lighter plug products that you can use starting today. So what I'm going to recommend is I bought actually three of them. These were six dollars each. What, I mean, I'm not what going are broke. Those? What, what are, are they? they? This is the same thing. That's that. I just had to send out of the box. What are they called? What is it? This is. Well, I'm going to. Eventually, I'll put in links to all this. This is a Noco brand name, 12 volt plug socket with eyelet terminals. These are clamps. Those are hook clamps. Oh, yeah. These are eyelets. They're going to have an eye. It's going to look just like an eye. I'll show you. Uh -huh. So everything you run on this system has to be 12 volts? No. Okay. This is an inverter, and an inverter converts to 110. 110. Right. Show them the end. And the controller is part of the panels in this? <laughs> in this case, the controller is built into okay. the panel. Okay. So what I've done with the inverter, I, I connected the black wire to the black knob, the red wire to the red knob. If there was a ring on here, I'd collect the black to the negative post, the red to the red post. Since these are clamps, I'm just going to clamp it on. Is that a modified it, sine wave? Uh, this one, I believe, is. It is. I, I'm now ready to run something. We're, we're done. I did 30 seconds realistically, and I'm ready to plug something in and run it up to 500 watts. You could, you, I could, I could bring my drill out right now, and it would run it. So if you try to plug it. your microwave in, and it's not going to work. Okay, yeah. so you got to. Okay, but you'll always are there. Okay. But you said something I want to emphasize, uh, and I'd ask you to say it again. You probably couldn't say it exactly the same way, but okay. uh, she learned how because she bought this thing, and it had a limit it has in a watts and volts, right? and so you learned and amps. And amps. And now you understand watts, volts, and amps. Yes. And I That's what I'm expecting for tapping with all of you. And you're not a genius. Smart. Well, you actually are pretty smart, I bet. <laughs> and I've talked I'm to you, smart. and I actually think you are pretty smart. You may be a genius. <laughs> but you're not an exceptional that's something that anyone here can't learn. And that's my goal, too. We're going to start out at such a simple level that you can start and learn. And... You, you learned about watts and amps and volts, and that's my goal. Now, what uh, Jim said was that uh, cigarette lighter clamps aren't very good. These are really cheap wires. So what I went ahead and did was I bought a better wire. This is an 8-gauge. What do you think that is? I think that's 10. Gauge. Oh, this? Yeah, what's on there? Oh, no. 12-14. Uh, 12-14. That's really a very small wire. So I wanted to show you putting on a better wire, because that really is a poor wire for this. And, and, and these things are kind of, these are really awkward. They're really cheap, and they're awkward, and I'm not impressed with them at all. The smaller the number, the bigger wire, and you can just see the size of these two wires. 
Wow. See how thin this wire is? Yeah. See how thick this wire is? Yeah. This, this is, is a, probably a 20 amp wire. It'll ha or no. It's a uh, 40. Um, well, 10 gauge is 30. So 8 gauge has got to be at least 40. Yeah. This is this is plenty of wire. It's it's overdone, and it's six foot. It's a lot longer. You can move it further away. This was eighteen dollars. It was a little bit of money, but I think the safety was worth it to me. And it's plug and play. All you got to do is open this thing up and put it on. And that, again, just to screw a nut on. And I think it's going to be safer in every way. And I think this was the better way to go. The only limitation is you you have to understand the ratio of power to use. So there's fifty amp hours of usable power in here, a, a thousand watts, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to suck the battery dry pretty quick. How are you going to refill it the next day? Or then. See, yeah, well, it'll run dry and the battery, I, I think we're getting more into the confusing realm and I don't want to get into the confusing realm. you got to match the supply with demand. The, in, uh, the inverter, I'll, I can think I can explain this to you really simple. Well, well, let me answer your question. Just a dummy question. Okay, so if I plug something into that inverter, it's too powerful for that battery to handle. It just won't work. Is that correct? Well, the battery, the inverter will shut off. Yeah, it won't if, work. If you plug in more than 500 watts to the inverter, the inverter will go into overload and shut off. If you plug well, in, I, if you plug in 500 watts into the inverter and run it long enough, the battery will go dead. So I can dis I can damage it if I do that. No. Well, you 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 don't damage the battery if you recharge it. You don't damage the inverter if you overload it. It, it just shuts off. It shuts off. Okay. On the back of every appliance uh, that's sold in America is a little plaque, right. especially 110 and 12 volt 2, and it will say the volts. It will give you some combination. Usually it gives you watts. Uh, so you'll have a combination. It will say uh, 110 volt or 120 or whatever it is and, and number of watts. And so you'll know the watts and don't exceed 500. And, and you know, anything, any normal appliance any, uh, will run on 500. A microwave obviously won't, you know. Uh, hair dryer. A hair dryer is not going to run. You know, just be, you, you shouldn't have those things in your rig. I mean, if, this, if you know this little about solar, uh, well, you know, you might have a class B and it came with a microwave so, uh Just... Put small things in here. That's that's the simplest way I can sell it to you. How do we know what the voltage of this battery is? We want to monitor it all the time. This is twelve dollars and twenty-four cents. You plug it into the cigarette lighter plug. It's just a standard cigarette lighter plug. It goes right in here, and it will monitor the voltage of your battery at all the times. You won't guess. You don't want the battery to go below twelve two, uh, and you want it to charge and be up at about twelve six seven or eight. I bought this off Amazon, but I have seen them at Walmart. And you know the way the thing with Walmart is it's there for a while and then it's gone and you never yeah. see it again. And maybe there'll be a cheaper one. This is a really good one. I do recommend this one. And I got it from Amazon. All this stuff's from Amazon. Uh, and I will eventually, when I post this video, have all the links to this stuff up there. Perfect. Um, I'm going to tell you the, the dirty little secret about voltages of batteries. They lie. It's just a filthy liar, the thing. And if power is going in... The voltage is read too high. Okay? If power if you're charging the battery with anything, it reads falsely high. So when I'm charging my battery, it might read 14, 14.1, 14, 14.2, 14, 14, 4. It could read up to 14.8. It could read 15. That's not accurate, but because it's just the nature of lead acid technology. And on the other hand, and so don't be worried, be happy. If you're seeing th high 13s or low 14s, you're good, you're really good. That's where you want to be. And on the other hand, when a battery is taking power out, I'm going to give you an example. During the day, if I, I have a microwave on a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. During the day, my battery might be a 14.4, and I might, that's what it's showing me, 14.4. And I plug, I plug in my microwave and I turn it on, it will instantly drop down to about 12. Now, both of those numbers are wrong. The battery is not at 12 and it's not at 14.4. It's reading false because batteries read false when power is being put in or power is being put out. And in that, I think that's really simple. Everyone here can understand that. And so that's something you need to understand. The only time this voltmeter will be really close to accurate 
uh, is when it's the battery is rested, and that means no power power has gone in and no power has come out. And for for the average one of us, that rested time is in the morning before the sun comes up. You haven't used it overnight. No power has come in. No power has gone out. If you will look at this in the morning, and we'll stick it in there, and you'll see. If you will look at this in the morning, and it says 12.4, you're good. Uh, your battery can go down to 12.2 uh, and be healthy. 12.4 uh, is health, really healthy for your battery in the morning. If it reads 5, 12.5, or 12.6, you are gold. That battery is going to last a long time. 12.6 is essentially a full battery, although 12.7. As long as, 7, you, as, long as you charge it. As long as it's kept charged. Again, that's the whole question. It's not how much can you take out. It's how are you going to refill it the next day. When the sun comes up, you have to have enough solar to put back in what you've taken out. So here's what will happen a lot of times. You don't put it, you don't have enough solar, and so uh, it slowly deteriorates. It never reaches 100% full, and it slowly deteriorates. And uh, the first day that you don't get it full, it's at 90%. The next day, it's at 85%. The third day, it's at 70%. The fourth day, it's because you're never refilling it, and it's running too much out. If you do that, your battery's on, you're going to kill it. That's how you kill a, ba a battery in a year, easily. And that's true of lithium. That, it's not as true, but to a degree it's true of lithium. Anytime you abuse a battery. So the whole thing is, how are you going to refill it the next day? And you want to have plenty of solar to recharge it. And for, but for most of you, two of these, 240 watts, will be plenty. 120 will be enough if you're careful. So this should be fused. This definitely needs a fuse. The fuse needs to be at the battery. Uh, and what I bought was, it's a, it's all done because I wanted you not to have to do any work and I'll put a link and it has a, uh, an eyelet and then a fuse and then an eyelet. And so you could just then take the eyelet from this and bolt it to the eyelet of the fuse. Right here under my finger. It's actually okay, got it's this little box. There's, these two boxes go to the solar panels. This tiny little box is the charge controller. Okay, we'll just turn okay. around and do it in quadrants. And it's flashing. Yeah. It's flashing. And it's flashing. power's coming in. Uh -huh. Just a little, it's cheap. I mean, this is cheap nothing thing. And if it burns out, you know what? It's so cheap, don't worry about it. Yeah, I, mo most of them that come on the back of these panels are $6, at, generally at least under $10. So you can replace it if it goes? Oh, easily. I, I basically put the inverter and the cigarette lighter plug, I, I, I just put them on the nuts or on the bolts and screwed the nuts on. I, I basically just screwed, unscrewed the nuts on the battery, put the two rings on each side from the inverter and the cigarette lighter and put the nuts back on. The heavy wires are going to the inverter, cigarette plugs. You, you shouldn't plug anything that draws a lot of power out of a cigarette plug. They're just not intended for it. They'll melt. E either the, what you plug in there will melt or the receptacle will melt. The cigarette lighter plugs are really poor. You only want to use small things. No Cell more than 10 amps. Ever. Cell phone, you don't want maybe a computer. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. 150 watts is the upper, really upper limit of, of a cigarette lighter plug. So uh, basically we've got solar panel going to the battery, from the battery uh, to the uh, cigarette lighter plugs to the inverter. We can just plug in any 110 item, less than 500 watts, into this. Okay, that's it. That really is. That's the whole system. We're not doing anything perfectly here. Uh, there will be a lot of people who complain about what we're doing, but it's perfectly fine. Uh, and I, I would definitely want to get these off because there's risk from... See, the whole thing is to get this covered so that the, the poles aren't exposed, so you don't drop things on them and have shorts. Uh, and having these up here are going to be a problem. I would definitely recommend uh, getting them wired or hardwired in, but that's a little more complicated, so for now we're just going to leave it this way because you'd have to learn how to strip and crimp, and that's another day. Wow, well, this battery's at 13.8 now. So it came, at, it came to be pretty full, and uh, we're at 13.8. No 12-volt battery is ever really at 13.8. That's the false reading because it's being charged. It's that means it's probably at 12.6. He, he wants to know with the battery, if, if you only use 20% of it, is it better than 50%? Sure. 
uh, the deeper you discharge it, the more lead comes off the plates, the longer it lasts. So if you go to the manufacturer's site, and they'll, they'll tell you at a 50% discharge, you'll get 500 cycles, but at a 20% discharge, you'll get 1,000 cycles. So it, it, it's an advantage if, to overbuild the system and, and make it cycle very lightly. Yeah, you, you, you never take it below 20% and you get it full the next day to 100, which should be very easy to do. That battery will is a 10-year battery. Even a cheap battery will last 10 years. That's why that's how you can buy really cheap starting batteries. I mean, really cheap starting batteries and have them last five, six, seven, eight years because they're brought to full every single day by the engine. So if you'll do that to the battery, never deeply discharge it, keep it full the next day, it will last forever. Let me just say this, that in every way, you want to use direct 12 volt appliances. The inverter wastes at least minimum of 10% of the power in the physical process of converting it. And we don't have a lot of power to waste in this small system. So you want to run everything that you can directly as 12 volt out of a cigarette lighter plug. So I would recommend that you get uh, 12 volt fans, uh, 12 volt lights, uh, just everything you can should be native 12 volt as opposed having a 110 plug. In fact, your laptop, almost, unless it's a really powerful laptop, you can almost certainly buy a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter plug for it and not have to run your laptop. You can run it right off this, and that's far better. If it's on, an inverter is drawing power, uh, usually a minimum of a quarter amp, so if you leave it on 10 hours, you've lost uh, 25, not 25, two and a half amps. You've thrown away two and a half amps just to turn the thing on and leave it on and never plug anything into it. So uh, you, you do want inverters, uh, but I believe, but use them absolute minimum. You can run it off 12 volt, run it off 12 volt. Okay, I think we've covered this. I mean, we, we are a lot of, you'll, you'll have a lot more questions, but I think you've seen that this is really a $425 here and probably another 10 for the uh, fuse that I didn't bring out. Uh, Man, it is just cheap and, and easy enough. I think if you watch this video and if you've seen us do this, you can do this. And it's only for $425, $445, and you're, you're good to go. This system will charge the goal zero. The goal zero has no chance of charging this. What I didn't mention was the goal zero has a built-in battery charger, or this one or all of them, so that you can plug them into the wall. We don't have that capacity here. I didn't create that capacity. I could have. I could have bought a cheap battery charger for 30, 40, 50 bucks, and, and you could have plugged it into the wall. It would have been another item. I'm assuming most of us don't generally have uh, short, short power, power. An out, a plug to put it in, and so I did not set that up. That is an advantage to the Goal Zero. It has it built in. You can plug it right into an outlet and charge it. This really isn't set up to be charged any other way but a solar panel. So that is a, those are both advantages to the solar generators. So the question was, can I charge my coach battery, my starter battery with this panel? Yes. Just hook directly to it and it'll never run down. Unless you're running a lot of things off it. So uh, if you're not running anything off it, it'll last forever because it'll just keep it 100% charged. It'll never have. So folks, I hope you got something out of this video if you uh, watched it and liked it. Uh, if so, then um, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you later.